So, in the last lecture, we saw that it was possible to recover the state from the outputs using this observer structure. And the key there was to build an estimate or a copy of the state, x hat, and to let the dynamics be given by the predictor part, which is x hat dot this a x hat, which is a copy of the original dynamics, plus the corrector part that basically compares the outputs to what the outputs would have been if x hat was indeed the state, and that output would have been c times x hat. Now, what we have here is this gain, L, and we saw that designing this L was just like designing a K when you're doing control design, and what we really needed to do then was just pole placement on the error dynamics. So if the error, we had E dot now being equal to A minus L C times E, and we just needed to stabilize that system. But just with control design, Observer design doesn't always work, and we saw that we needed some kind of notion related to controllability that works for observer design, and that notion is observability. So observability is really the topic of today's lecture. And uh, just as for controllability, it's easiest to approach this with a rather modest and simple example. Uh, so we're going to deal with a discrete time system where xk plus 1 is axk and the output yk is cxk. And we start somewhere. We have some x naught. And the question is, by collecting n different outputs, can we recover the initial condition? Meaning, can we figure out where we started from? Well, at time 0, the output is simply c times x naught, right? At time 1, the output is c times x1. Well, x1 is a times x0, so the output at time 1 is c a x0, and so forth. So at time n minus 1, the output is c a to the power n minus 1 times x0. So now I've gathered these little n different measurements or y's, and the relationship that we have is this. It looks very similar to what we had in the controllability case, and in fact, this matrix here is going to be the new main character in the observability drama. In fact, this is an important matrix that we're going to call omega. And in fact, omega will be called the observability matrix as opposed to gamma, which was the controllability matrix. Now, just as we had in the control problem, we have a similar kind of setup where uh, we want to be able to basically invert omega to recover x naught from this stack of outputs. And just as in the controllability case, this is possible when this omega, the observability matrix, has full rank, meaning that the number of linearly independent rows or columns, it's the same, is equal to little, little n. And luckily for us, just as for controllability, this result generalizes to the case that we're actually interested in, which is the continuous time, x dot is ax, y is uh, cx. So observability in general means that the system is completely observable, which I'm going to call CO, if it is possible to recover the initial state from the output. That's basically what it means. I collect enough outputs, and from there, I'm able to tell you where the system started. And just like for controllability, we have a matrix. In this case, it's omega, which is the observability matrix. And theorem number one mirrors exactly theorem number one in the controllability case. It says, so this is controllability, complete observability theorem number one. It says, the system is completely observable if and only if the rank of omega is equal to little n, meaning this observability matrix has full rank. Now, as before, the rank is simply the number of linearly independent rows or columns of the matrix omega in this case. Now, we have the second theorem. It follows directly in the same way as it did for controllability. So if I have this as my observer dynamics, and then I find the error dynamics, where E simply is the actual state minus my state estimate, well, what I wanted to do, of course, is drive e to 0. That's what I would like. Well, theorem number 2 tells me that this is possible if and only if 
using pole placement to arbitrary eigenvalues if and only if the system is completely observable. So we have an exact dual to controllability when we're designing observers. And in fact, designing observers or estimating the state is really the same thing as doing control design. It just happens that we're stabilizing error dynamics instead of stabilizing the state. So this is good news, right? Because now we can actually figure out what the state is. So we are very, very close now to being able to design controllers as if we have x, which we don't. We have y. But we use y to figure out an estimate on x. So what we're going to do in the next lecture is simply put what we've done on the control design side and on the observer design side together in order to be able to actually control linear systems where we don't have the state but all we do have is the output.